I was born with Asperger's Syndrome. Back when I was a kid, I had too many problems of not being able to read at my proper level, reading too far ahead, and the schools would not let me go and get ahead as far as I needed to. So finally, my father took me on a sailing trip around the world. I learned a shitload about other cultures, read a, uh, read a bunch on long ocean trips, and started to make some tangential connections between a wide range of subjects. When I came back, I attended four years of private school, got an interesting religious education which taught me some rules of debate and consultation. When I attended university, I attempted to start a political science background, but realizing that there was a lack of critical thinking, I switched over to hard science. Now I am a hard science student and an amateur magician, continuing on to learn hopefully everything at some level enough to make me the expert layman. Good afternoon, buenas tardes, bonsoir, konnichiwa, just a few of the languages of the places I've been to, I've covered a crap load in my life. A forum over on Facebook once said, you might be an Aspie, the term us Aspie, uh, people with Asperger's syndrome call each other, if you have enough useless data being carried around, um, enough random information for any occasion. Well, I certainly fit that description, however, I intend to put that information to use. Always have and always will. Only problem was though, I went out into society and when I um when I talked to people, um I often had trouble explaining logic to them. Um often they said their brain hurt when I tried to explain complicated concepts, uh, even simple stuff like quantum teleportation, or um or stuff about uh, bond chemical bonding, for example. Um, a lot of people as well um, said that I went too fast, you, the logic was a little bit too much for them. Um, and I found as well that a lot of people made some very irrational assumptions and a lot of emotional reactions, such as the creationists. I asked a um, psychologist once about this, well, more specifically a master's of psychology. She told me that a lot of neurotypicals, particularly uh, neurotypical uh, women, this is exactly quoted directly from her, think a lot more with their emotions and pa process their logic through their emotional centers. It's, um, or they segregate the two or what have you, but emotional issues and a large amount of other things, um, which might cause knee-jerk reactions, don't, people don't critically think about them, and as a result, well, I guess there's a certain amount of inhibiting of critical thinking in our society. So, um, deciding then, I decided to start this show in the hopes of di uh, avoiding that particular problem. The way I'm going to do that is by bringing up the list of 35 critical thinking fallacies, which I was given in my most recent uh, philosophy course I took as a distribution credit, um, for, uh, which was philosophy of critical thinking. Uh, somebody once told me that philosophy was bullshit because a lot of people just made stuff up. That may be true, but it was also the foundation for science. And without critical thinking, um, well, where are the law rules of logic that apply to law, um, our everyday lives, mathematics, science? We need them. So, let's, uh, season one, uh, to give you a rundown of how this show is going to work, will consist. Um, each episode will consist of one of the 35 critical thinking fallacies. I will um, tell the definition, give a little bit of an example, then go out on the street and see if people can recognize it or what have you, and then maybe put a context into daily life. Season two, we'll start covering correct interpretation. We'll start uh, covering interpretation of scientific data and actually start covering scientific processes. Um, third season, we'll start covering everything else, including religion, uh, paranormal, uh, magic. Um, politics, etc., or even just stuff in everyday life like how to uh, avoid getting uh, scammed by the interest uh, by the interest companies from your credit card uh, by the interest from your credit card company. So, let's give you an example. 
Today's fallacy is bifurcation or false dilemma. Bifurcation or false dilemma. The definition of false dilemma is two choices are given when in fact there are three options or more. So um, to give you an example, say for example, we'll use stem cell research. That was a big one a while back. Um, uh, wait, let's see, let me see. Uh, the, uh, an example of phrasing of a false dilemma would be, um, it's all or nothing. Either we uh, use babies completely um, for stem cell research, or we don't do stem cell research at all. It's the only moral choice, and you've got to be on one side of the fence or the other. Um, needless to say, of course, though, there are um, a great number of other options. For example, um, using the existing stem cell lines that we currently have right now. Um, uh, you know, we can uh, use animal stem cells, adult stem cells. Some of these researches are already being done, and President Bush even took a third option. Um, namely, having the current 85 strains that were um, already being researched on allowed to be used to, uh, for clinical trials on cancer treatment, that sort of thing. Um, dealing with stem cell research, however, that's going to be left for season two. So, let's go to the street. I'm going to give some examples of false dilemmas and uh, using current events, and let's see if people can catch it. I could ask you a couple of questions on it actually and you wouldn't have to be in the film. Okay. Yeah. Um, basically my quick question is about the, uh, the whole new bylaw. Um, I've been hearing arguments as uh, along with um, uh, such things as sort of like uh, we either have to make this uh, smoking bylaw so people can't smoke in patios or everybody's going to end up getting polluted with secondhand lung cancer. You know, and, uh, you know everybody's got to go back. Do you agree with that argument? I'm of two minds of it. My my opinion is that it should be cigarettes are legal and not sell them. I mean that that's kind of cigarettes are legal and not sell them. Yeah, I mean that yeah. it's just money making. So if they're harmful for your health, then why do they allow them to make them? Yeah. So then basically, so then the exact argument which was given about this bylaw amendment. Uh, do you find there's some? Do you find anything wrong with that argument then? Uh, you know about uh, like a bylaw, you know, like just banning uh, smoking on patios, and if we don't do that, then we're going to end up uh, getting into, uh, then we're all going to get uh, like, you know, secondhand smoke, uh, lung cancer or something like that? Well, I don't think we're going to get secondhand smoke, but I think it's a lot of the sound of I have a son, and even if he's in the restaurant, he can smell people smoking on the patio. It really bothers me. I understand. Yeah. Well, the reason I'm, well, when you, as you said yourself, that uh, we could we could ban uh, cigarettes uh, outright, so that yeah. would be a third option, wouldn't it? Yeah. Thus, presenting thus kind of that's, poking a flaw in that argument, so to speak. That's the, that's the right that's the right option. Yeah, it's the right if option. Harmful, to ban, yeah, if yes. you're harmful, ban them. Yeah. So there's a third option. <laughs> so that again, positively, uh, once again, showing that VHA may have actually given us what's called a false dilemma. Either we do the bylaw they suggest, or a complaint where we end up in uh, where we end up in crap. And of course, there's a third option, which is banning cigarettes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I was wondering about that. I thought, I thought it came into effect on July. Oh, it, ha it already has come into effect. Yeah. What I'm trying to get is people's opinions on it. Yeah. Thanks. I don't, I'm not against it. Mm -hmm. In the previous clip you saw, the woman did not want to be put on video. I told her I was doing this for philosophy class. So um, we got her audio instead. Now, um, for the uh, this week's uh, question, uh, I'm going to present an argument to you, and I want you to spot every single fallacy that I use in it, and with any luck, you will, um, you know, those who posted uh, down below on the uh, blog TV, down in the comments, uh, the person who wins, um, We'll win a chance to be on the next of. Uh, we'll be win a chance to be on the next episode of the uh, the expert layman. So, um, here's the argument. When it comes to religion, you are either an intelligent atheist evolutionary who believes in evolution, or you're one of those evil, stupid creationist religious freaks. After all, 90% of people believe that.